the pipeline across the width of this province and then ship this diluted bitumen through narrow channels that experience some of the most extreme weather, they are not just risking environmental harm. They are risking desecrating our collective identity. In my opinion, this pipeline would, counter to our motto, be a diminishment to BC's beauty. In Enbridge's discussion surrounding this proposed pipeline, money and economic gains seem to be the heart of the matter. But how do you put a price on identity? I urge the panel to consider all non-monetary arguments with as much weight, if not more, than the monetary ones. It is a difficult task for you, as balance sheets cannot easily be tabulated marking how much I and all of my peers who have already presented here do not want this pipeline. How to summarize arguments and make decisions when numbers are not involved is a great challenge, but these non-monetary opinions cannot continue to be devalued. In my opinion, Enbridge has not demonstrated an acceptably high enough moral standard, and they do not have public confidence. Their science has been criticized, their economics have been criticized, and their history of oil spills is nothing to desire to be repeated. There is not confidence in their ability to do this safely. Too much is at risk. As I have mentioned, I am a graduate student at the University of British Columbia and completed my undergraduate degree at McGill University. Both of these institutions have extreme consequences for academic misconduct. A student caught dishonestly presenting their work can face temporary suspension or complete expulsion from the institution, including official records of such on a transcript. Enbridge cited a 1.8 kilometer per kilometer squared corridor density as a corridor density threshold for caribou based on a Francis et al. 2002 paper. However, that paper does not exist. At a university, simply replacing dishonest statements with correct ones does not exclude severe repercussions. In the case of a student presenting false information in a term paper, there is no harm done to any humans, life, ecosystems, or economics, but the university holds moral responsibility to high esteem. And which does not face any of the same sort of institutionalized punishments from any formal organization as a result of their academic misconduct. However, there are unofficial consequences. Enbridge has further lost the confidence of society. The scientific mistake, or purposeful misleading, depending on how you understand it, was identified by someone outside of Enbridge. But this brings to question what other dishonesty has gone unnoticed. In my opinion, absolutely nothing this company says can be trusted without third-party verification. Why would we let Enbridge build a pipeline through this province and risk so very much? As you are well aware, I signed up to give you my opinion over a year ago. Since then, I have traveled hundreds of kilometers to attend various protests against the Northern Gateway Pipeline. I have submitted written comment to this panel. I have written my municipal, provincial, and federal governments to tell them I do not want this pipeline. I am seeking every legal, meaningful venue to express my opposition. It is not out of boredom that I do this. The time I have committed to this is significant. When I first signed up to present at this hearing, I was living in Vancouver. Since then, I have moved to Campbell River on Vancouver Island, and so my presentation to you today re represents a significant amount of travel for me to be here with its associated financial costs. And while I hesitate to bring in economic discussions, as I fear they will devalue the non-economic non arguments I present, I feel you should understand that as an individual currently with zero income, the costs associated with me being here are significant. If this pipeline is not given approval, I gain zero financial benefit. However, I do gain in that I will feel that the province's natural endowment will be less at risk. As I speak of my financial investment in opposing this pipeline, it also brings to mind the inequality of any gains to be made. Those who stand to profit are those with money invested in Enbridge. Some may think that if I want to benefit from this, then all I have to do is invest my money in Enbridge. However, it is not that simple. If you are poor, you have very little money to invest. It is those who already have very much who can profit from their investments. But if an oil spill were to happen, then it would be everyone's tax dollars paying for the cleanup, not just those who have invested in the company. No other BC species has a bank account. The bears and salmon can't profit from this. And all of British Columbia's whose environment will be degraded, sorry, degraded, um, who will bear these risks, not investors living around the world. The risks are borne by all British Columbians, but the benefits by a select few. To me, this is not just. Further, it is unjust and an abuse of power to force a pipeline through unceded First Nations territory when these nations have said that Enbridge does not have permission to do so. Enbridge must acknowledge and respect their sovereignty over their lands. 
Enbridge's response to public concerns has often been to emphasize precautions they are taking. They say they have world-class safety. This is rhetoric. World-class does not mean it is completely safe. The Titanic was supposedly supposed to be the ship that couldn't sink, but it did. A 2006 report titled An Assessment of the Role of Human Factors in Oil Spills from Vessels by the Nuke Research and Planning Group stated that, quote, technology-based prevention measures such as double hulls and redundant systems can reduce the severity of an oil spill caused by groundings or collisions, but they cannot interrupt the chain of events that may cause the accident to occur in the first place. Therefore, in coming years, as double-hauled oil tankers are phased in, human factors will remain a crucial component of oil spill prevention systems in the Prince William Sound tanker trade and worldwide." End quote. Humans will always make mistakes. There is no human that does not. Often consequences of these mistakes are not extreme. However, in the case of this pipeline and these tankers, the consequences could be absolutely devastating. Wildlife have not have still not recovered from the Exxon Valdez spill over two decades later. As I conclude my statement, I ask that you, the panel, take my comments to heart. I imagine that you are supposed to remain emotionless through this procedure, but unfortunately, emotions are a large part of this. Facts are important, but only in that facts help us understand results, which influence how we feel. As a society, what greater goal should we have than improving the emotional and physical well-being of all humans and of all other life around us? I am firmly against this project. I do not believe it is in the public interest, and I recommend that it not be approved. Thank you. Thank you to each of you for uh, being here. Ms. Winterholt, as you've explained to us, you've traveled from a distance to be here to, uh, to be able to present your, your statement in person to us, and we appreciate everybody's presence here today. Thank you. Uh, that understand that there's another speaker who's just arrived and they're just being checked in so we'll just um, wait for that process to happen and then proceed. Mr. Humans? Okay. Okay. I thank appreciate you. you entertaining me here. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mr. Humans. We do our best to be able to pronounce people's names accurately. Okay. And, uh, so thank you very much for being here, and please proceed with your oral statement. Okay, that's fine. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize for being late. My wife just had a baby last week, and so I'm no longer functioning at a Well, then, <laughs> we, have to, we have to stop right now and offer our congratulations. Oh, thank and you very much. <laughs> okay. um, I'll, I'll make it short and sweet, I guess. Um, Ultimately, I feel this project is ill-timed uh, insofar as to go forward with it before we as a country have had a serious and adult conversation about what we expect and deserve from our fossil fuel industry um, it is just sort of wrong. I guess essentially what I'm saying is that most other countries, with the exception of our southern neighbors, as far as I know, have either a fully nationalized or at least a partially nationalized energy program where the benefits of this incredible resource that time has gifted us are redistributed to the people in a way that, uh, that is fair. Um, insofar as I see it right now, going forward with a pipeline like this is just a conduit for getting the product out of the country and into somebody else's hands as fast as possible. And the only people, not the only people, the people who are <laughs> benefiting the most from it are the shareholders of the companies that are involved and I suppose the workers who are also involved in the industry, which is fine. But 
I, as a Canadian who is not employed in the energy industry, would appreciate getting a greater share of the dividends of this uh, rather tremendous resource that we have. I guess the, the second point I would probably like to make, and I know it's not one that's within the uh, purview of this hearing today, um, and so I know it doesn't make it in the final report, but you as esteemed folks out there in the world who have uh, friends in high places, I think it would behoove you to encourage them that when these projects are considered to look at the cumulative environmental impacts of them and not look at the projects in isolation when they're assessed. I mean, yes, the pipeline itself has its own environmental risks, um, but it is just part of a larger a larger energy project for the country. Um, ultimately, Canada becomes a rather large exporter of, of climate change as projects like this proceed, and I think we need to take into uh, serious consideration what, <laughs> how, how we as, as, as a great country and as citizens of this great country should um, consider our role in the world. There's, uh, there's downstream impacts from not just the fossil fuel industry, but us shooting our fossil fuels out into other countries so that they can be burned elsewhere and uh, contribute to climate change, which, as we know, is, uh, is a very serious issue. We have a rather large country, so hopefully we'll be able to accommodate all of the climate change refugees that are going to be streaming in here when uh, all of this comes home to roost. And I think that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you very much for making the time from obviously a very busy schedule to be here. So, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes uh, this afternoon's uh, session, and we will sit again tomorrow morning at 9. Thank you, everyone. Good evening.